Sitting here with a victorious Lebo Masitoa, how does it feel to get the second win over Keaton Gomez? I don't know, it feels good. It feels good, definitely. So, uh, we'll see what's next now, you know. I, uh, I pushed really hard for this fight. You know, since before lockdown, I was supposed to fight him. Like early April, I think, but then lockdown happened. But then uh, the fight eventually happened now in October. So, yeah, all the hard work paid off. But I still have to work harder, make some improvements, you know, a lot of mistakes in that fight that shouldn't have happened, but I'll work on them. I want to talk about, you know, a situation that happened during the bubble. Obviously, uh, Lionel wasn't feeling too well. He had to go home, but you st stuck together and you stayed mentally strong. We saw a situation where another guy also lost a trainer in his training camp, Eric Kapai. Yes. His result didn't go too well, but yours did. How did you stay mentally strong throughout? No, it was easy because I trained a lot. I was ready for this fight mentally. In training, I told myself, this guy can't beat me again. Like, there's no ways. So I was ready. So when Lionel had to go home, I, I was like, okay, it's fine. It doesn't change a thing. Let me just stay focused. I'll worry about that after the fight. Yeah. Well, as a professional boxer, you're doing really well so far. It's eight wins, one loss, I think, at the moment. Um, you know, do you still want to redeem that loss somewhere in the, down the line? Or yeah, uh, yeah. is there a change? Definitely, of... I'd love to. If it happens, if they would like to do it as well, I'm up for the challenge. You know, the reason I ask you that as well is because you've said in other interviews, you said in interviews with me before, that you may be considering a light heavyweight move. I mean, obviously, it's a huge weight change. It's about 10 kilograms of difference. But you've been considering the move. So in saying that, where you stand with regards to that? Uh, well, that was the plan. Then this uh, tournament came up with Golden Love. So, okay, I couldn't leave it. My coach said, okay, no, let's go for this one. We'll see about that after dropping slide heavy. So right now I'm not sure exactly what's happening, but uh, it's still in talks with the manager. So I'll hear from them. I want to talk about your actual fighting ability now. Um, you go. You seem to have one gear. I don't know how to explain this, but you just you go from the beginning. You don't. You don't. You don't take too much time to warm up. You pretty much shop from round one. How do you adapt in the ring to what you see? Because what you're doing is sort of putting a lot of pressure on guys. But you know, if that if the game plan doesn't work, can you? Do you actually have the tools to adapt? Uh, yes. You know, you have to be ready for anything. You know, even a knockdown. You have to know, okay, what am I going to do if he knocks me down, you know? Because, you know, 10 rounds are a long time, so you just take your time. But every round, you try and increase the pace, you know? So that, that's, what, that's what I trained for, you know? I had a lot of training partners, you know? There's a lot of guys training on my gym. So I was pushing with the sparring. So I was ready, you know? Everybody's a different style, so that helps, you know? So when you're training, you get used to this guy. You know, so when it comes to an actual fight, you know, okay, this guy fights like this. So you, it just comes automatic, you know, you, you just adapt to the fighting style and yeah, that's what happens. But uh, personally for me, I think because, you know, when you fit, you, you can adapt to anything, but only when you fit, you know, and obviously in the mindset, you have to be quick with your thinking, all in a split second, you know, your reaction, everything, you have to know what you're doing, you know. Yeah, so that's how I came a long way from amateur ever since. Do you watch, I mean, at amateurs, you can't study your opponents. I mean, if you know of them, you're very lucky. You know, you know what sort of fight style you're getting. To. Are you the type of guy that likes to study opponents or do you leave that? Only before the fight. Yeah, only before the fight. But it doesn't worry me too much. I just watch it, just watch the opponent to see, okay, what to expect, you know. And yeah, it's better to come in ready, you know, because... In the actual fight, you can never know the guy's fitness, you know. So you just better hope you fit it in him, then you don't have to worry much. Well, I mean, if you if you look at your career, right, you've had rematches twice. You always look better in the second fight. Why is that? Uh, because I know what happened. I know how it felt to fight that opponent the first time. So when you know how it felt, then, okay, you tell yourself, okay, I'm going to increase the training. So I increased my sprints, you know, the running, you know, the work bag, you know, the pace on the bag, you know. So, yeah, you have to increase, judging from the, how you felt, how your, your body felt the first time. So then you know what to do the second time. 
level as your life I'm not going to say it's a big change because you haven't won a world championship yet, but in this small space of time, has your life changed from the t- um, sort of beating Keaton Gomes twice? No, not much. Still the same. Still the same. So you haven't felt any, like, any extra messages saying good luck for your fight level, like your popularity. Do you feel it rising? Oh, when you say it like that, then yeah, yeah that, that changed a lot, you know. My phone was just going and going, you know, and a lot of people were happy. You know, they were happy for me that I beat Gomez again, you know. So, yeah, it, that was actually the only change, the major change, yes. You know, I don't really think about that, you know. I just want to stay focused, you know. So, yeah. Talk us through a day in the life of you. What are you doing outside of training? What, when, you, when you come to training, when you go home, what are you doing? Well, I rest mostly, rest the body, you know, because I'm not walking. So, it's just training, go home, rest, then go back to train, you know, running. Yeah, so basically that's been since I was done at college last year. So this year it's just been training. That's it. Looking towards the next step, I know you can't say because it's usually up to the managers, trainers, all these sort of things. But what would you like to do next? Next. So, uh, well, honestly, I'm, I think I'll just focus on boxing mostly, you know, from next year. Yeah, full time. Well, that's what I'm strongly being considered in, so we'll see what happens. But uh, I'm also planning on going back to school. School, yeah. So, that's important. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the two things that's been in my mind, what I'm going to continue doing. So, yeah. Well, if we look at next year and things open up again, obviously you're thinking of going back to school and boxing, hopefully there's crowds again, television is coming back on board. What are you expecting next year to be like? Well, a lot of opportunities, you know, uh, I could get some real good challenges, you know, so that's going to keep me busy, you know, I'll be, I'll be working much harder next year, yes. Well, we're looking at light heavyweight now, I'm going to quickly switch the flip and say, let's just say I'm preempting the future and I'm going to say level is moving down to light heavyweight. There are very few guys that are going to be available to fight you as opposed to cruiserweights. However, there's a guy called Nicholas Radley who's waiting there with the NSA title. If you want to move down, you want to fight someone like that? Yes, definitely. He's been the first one in mind, okay. He's champion, so if there's a promotion willing to put up that tournament, then if they think, okay, I'm a good challenger for him, then yeah, I could take, I could take uh, Radley down, you know. I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, like he, who, he lost to uh, Rowan Campbell. And they take him out four rounds. I mean, like, I beat Ron Campbell twice in amateur. He beat me once, you know, before three times. So, I mean, like, I don't think there's a chance Nicholas Adley could beat me. No ways. No ways. And um, lastly, Lebo, do you have a shout-out for anybody out there that might want to hear a message from you? Oh, yes, no. I'd just like to thank uh, all the supporters, you know, everybody who's been uh, behind me through this journey this year especially so uh, I just really appreciate the support thank you very much